Coming up on this episode of Don't Unfriend Me. Well, well, he's going to tell you why it's a problem, and I'm going to tell you too beforehand. Uh, the reason why is because this situation, I want you to look at it from, from a veteran's eyes. I want you to think about a veteran who might be going through a moment of, um, of crisis or an episode where a simple knock on the door that's unannounced or uninvited can create an extreme amount of tension for a veteran. I, I know that sounds silly, but uh, until you've been in that situation, you don't know. I want you to look at the stucco on the wall and the narrowed vision that creates from that hallway. Uh, and if you are in a state and seeing people in, you know, uh, olive drab military style colors uh, and see a guy back there in a camel, camel hair jacket, and I, uh, how quickly and how difficult would it be for somebody who is suffering an episode or a flashback or in some sort of mental trauma who is armed to not consider that at a flash moment? to be a- All right. Good morning. Don't unfriend me. Nation, I apologize. I'm, I'm not 100 percent prepared for this. Okay, on the weekends, it's insane. I, I try to stay on top of things, but I receive a ton of communication and I don't always have the time to get to it. So. Uh, I, you know, people send me stuff all the time and, and this lasts anywhere from a couple of seconds to hours on, it'll put me down the rabbit hole. Most of the time it's a couple of seconds and I, I have either seen the information being shared with me or I disprove it in a matter of seconds and then I just scrap it. I, the, the way my mind works and the way that I, I do things is, uh, I attempt to, um, disprove things before I, I accept them. And that's just the way my mind works and military training and everything else through Intel is, is that's the way I, I see things. And you ask most Intel guys, I'll tell you the same thing. It's all about disproving something. And then once you do that, it starts to unravel. So when I get something from a viewer, the first thing I do is I read it and I, I start perusing the article or the image or whatever it is. And once I find something that's inaccurate, at that point, I, I just start pulling the thread and, and it falls apart. But occasionally I get something that that catches my attention and will put me in this spiral of diving into it. And it doesn't happen often. But in today's world, you can understand there's a lot of things out there that are simply just bunk and, and not accurate. This is an intriguing story. And it's something that I saw. Uh, Matthew Spirit hosted on in front of me. Welcome to the show. This one might go a little longer. There's a 15 minute video. And if we watch it all, this is going to be an hour long episode. I don't want to do that, but you never know what's going to happen. We might fast forward through some spots and then you can watch it yourself. What we've got here is a situation, a veteran. And I obviously care a lot about veterans. I end my show every day with veteran suicide awareness and the 22 veterans that commit suicide a day and how we can help them. This is uh, the, the post that I got was just a video. And Jason Wixom, a viewer of mine, says, hey, Matt, is this real? And immediately I will tell you it's absolutely real. But there's not a lot of information on it because there is a history of this veteran that has been captured with a book that he is doing, God is a Grunt, and um, his experiences uh, overseas. And then there's this this other side story, which we're going to kind of watch on video and we can talk about it. The God is a Grunt... uh, book is available on Amazon. I'd recommend you pick it up. It seems pretty darn interesting to me. I have not had a chance to read it, of course, but this is Logan Isaac. He's in the bottom right-hand corner. If you go to the American Legion, you can find this uh, by the Tango Alpha Lima podcast. I haven't listened to them, but they sound pretty interesting. He is uh, just from the 45 minutes out of the hour that I've watched, a very intriguing human being, someone I'm going to try to get on the show. And he joined the army in 2000. He was in basic training when the USS Cole was attacked. I have quite a few friends actually who were on the coal. Uh, his family has a long line of military connections. Father was in the Navy during Vietnam. His grandfather served during World War II. Uh, when he was in Iraq, he recalled what it meant, quote, to be an instrument of foreign policy. I always thought of myself as a Christian, but in combat, it ratcheted up what was important and what was not important. I called myself a Christian, but what does that really mean? Through these journeys and through the teachings of theology, when he came back, his struggles that he did have uh, with the conflict ultimately were not necessarily remedied, but allowed him to embrace and then, you know, disseminate this feeling and emotion to other people and have them process uh, process it as well. So if we're going to go ahead and go into Logan's service and things to that effect, this could be a very long show as well. But there's a substack 
by the post, GI, hashtag GI justice. I want to make sure I give everyone credit. Um, it was post 9934 in Dana Point, And it talks about the post commander at the VFW for 9934 in Dana Point, California. Um, it talks a little bit about what happened there in regards to an email. And then that email was referred to the sheriff's office. And this interaction is based upon that, that there was some concerning matters in regards to what was being discussed. And the topic was concerning to this Rick guy uh, at the VFW. So the sheriff's office come out with um, a psychologist and to do a door knock and check. Now, this obviously has been heightened, especially in California and other places where mass shootings have taken place, where they're starting to, uh, you know, door knock, where a neighbor can narc on another neighbor, and then all of a sudden you get this visit. Um, this has been used in, in, in negative fashion across social media as pranks uh, to people who disagree with certain dispositions or political ideology, and they call... Uh, you know, sheriff's department and say this person had a gun or this person was waving it around threatening and none of that happened. And then you get your door kicked in. This is a little bit less severe than that, but still concerning and troubling. Uh, I want to watch this and you can watch it with me. I know it's a little bit long, but it's an interesting exchange, not only in individual rights, but how do police officers do their job effectively without encroaching upon people's civil rights? Uh, let's go ahead and watch a little bit of this. Like I said, I might skip around. How you doing? How you doing today, sir? Fine. I'm Deputy Silver with the Sheriff's Department. This is my partner, Deputy Kruger, and our other partner here, Topher. How's it going? Um, we didn't get a call on you or anything like that. You're not in trouble. We're just here to follow up. Um, on a letter, I guess, that was sent, an email that was sent to the VF. Okay, so first off, um, you have two officers that are in a narrow hallway. He's recording. Logan is recording right now, and I know there's a recording of that video. You can find that on that sub stack that I referred to you earlier. Um, I'll try to probably go more into it tonight on tonight's show because I think it it warrants a deeper dive. Uh, the officers are in a pretty casual position, but there's a few things you should register is that the officer on the left there who is in the video uh, is has half of his body behind that retaining wall and the hallway wall there. Um, his hand is close to his sidearm, but obviously not resting on his sidearm. He's watching, but he's in a position that if he needs to draw and put his body out of harm's way, he's got a position where he can. The other officer who is recording on his recording device is obviously stationed halfway across the wall as well. One sidestep and he will be clear, be able to draw his weapon and exchange fire. This is a defensive posture. It's pretty SOP and standard operating when you're knocking a door or going to a car. But the fact that they are positioning themselves is that they consider him some sort of threat. Now, one is because he's a veteran. And anytime an officer door knocks a veteran who is possibly showing signs of PTS, TBIs, anxiety, depression, whatever, you're, you're going to go ahead and take caution. We saw this obviously heightened after the Chris Kyle incident. Um, but once again, if I am a veteran, uh, I'm looking at Logan and he's relaxed. Um, his one hand's on his hip, the other one's kind of on the wall. He, he, he's, he doesn't necessarily uh, strike to me as a person who is, uh, is threatening in any way, shape, or form, but that can also be deceiving. But in, in, at this point, as an officer, uh, my alarm bells aren't going off, but it's interesting that they don't kind of stand down and relax their position in any way, shape, or form. So when they say, you're not in trouble, or we're just here to talk, well, that's a complete lie. Of course, there is a, a, an understanding, a basic understanding, that they wouldn't be knocking on the door unless there was some sort of issue. You have to always understand that a cop just doesn't knock your door. They may want in your backyard for something. There might be someone hiding, or there might be uh, your car was identified and they didn't get the license plate, and they're just they're they're checking. Or there was a crime in the neighborhood, they want to see if you heard something. But either way, they want to communicate with you, and based upon your interaction, depends on what happens after that. So when they say, "Oh, it's no big deal. I'm here just to talk to you," the first thing I would say is, "That's fine. I I have no desire to have a conversation with you unless you need something from me." And I'm not being a jerk. I'm just not going to sit there and I have no desire to talk to my neighbor, let alone some officer, unless you need something. It's just who I am. Uh, Logan, obviously, is a little bit more uh, open and affable than I would be. W, 
Probably. Yeah, by your wife, Laura? Sure. Uh, Laura had said that there was some concerns, I guess, she uh, addressed to the VFW regarding... Um, a See, so, so call me crazy, but I, I'm not, I'm not going to do an audit here. I just want you to know what I would say is, listen, am I, am I being detained or am I under arrest? <laughs> That's the first question I'm going to ask. And, and the officer's going to be, no, of course not. We said there was no problem. I said, well, I don't feel comfortable answering these questions. What, why is there a line of questioning here? What, what are you, you know, is this an investigation? And if it's an investigation, am I a suspect? And if I'm a suspect, uh, these questions are, are, are inappropriate to say the least. I, I have no desire to answer any questions until my lawyer's present. And it's not because I have something to hide. It's because ultimately an officer is not your friend. They're not there to help you. Um, even if you call and ask for assistance on something, there, there can be something that you can say that can be held against you later if you are not in the right based upon the call that you're making. It's really important to understand is it's okay to have a casual conversation, surface level questions. Are you home alone? How are you? What's your state of mind? Those are individual questions. But when they start asking about other people and third parties, and uh, at that point, I want a lawyer involved. Recent contact you had with them? Uh, reference that yeah, I guess you were at a meeting and there was a book that you were you had published. Okay. Uh, and then they had told you you couldn't talk about the book or something. And I guess Laura had some concerns about you know your um, your interaction with them. What does that have to do with the police? So the re so the reason why we're actually here is uh, we're. Okay, so now we get the real reason, right? So 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 we've BSed you. Now we're going to tell you why. And see, uh, immediately this is you know kind of insanity. I, I remember. Uh, two officers that showed up at my door. I was It was a Sunday afternoon. My wife was at work. She went down to pick something up. I was on the computer and I don't know what I was doing, but I was I was surfing. Um, I, I, it, it doesn't matter. It was something stupid. Maybe Jethro Toll tickets or Colorado Avalanche stats or something like that. I'm, I'm confident it wasn't porn uh, because they, they turned on the computer and gosh, that would have been embarrassing. But they knocked on my door and the officers are like, hi, how are you? And I said, fine. He said, can we come in? And I and, you know, after a little bit of, of nuance, and I, I said, well, what is this about? They said, well, we have a noise complaint. And I said, okay, well, you can simply tell me to turn it down. And they're like, and I know there was a noise complaint because there was absolutely no noise coming from the apartment because I was by myself. I had my headphones on and I was probably listening to uh, some sort of Napster or whatever and stolen music, which maybe that's why they were there. Dun, 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 dun. But they came in and, and then immediately... Once I started questioning about why are you in my house with a noise complaint, I don't understand what's going on here. And I wasn't always as well read as I am now on constitutional law, but I've always had an inkling for it. And, um, and they said, well, actually, you have, a, you have a complaint from a former roommate who says you have personal property of theirs and, and, and uh, that it's stolen. And we're waiting for a warrant and we're waiting for – and I said, excuse me? I said, you entered my house on, on a false premise under false pretense. Uh, you lied to me. I'm going to need you to leave my my premises immediately, and I need you to get out. And he's like, actually, we're going to stay right here until our supervisor comes down and has a warrant. And so I, I said, I'm getting on the phone. And I got on the phone, and I called the sheriff's department, not the local police department. And I, I said, I, I've got two people here posing as officers. I don't know what's going on. Uh, they were told me it was a noise complaint. Now they're saying that, that I have stolen property, uh, which is fictitious and not true. I, I need somebody to come down here and address this. And then, of course, that's they left at that point. They said, Mr. Spear, we're going to wait outside if you'd be more comfortable. And I'm like, oh, wait a second. So you got to know your rights. And when the officers came in there and presented themselves one way and then decided to change it, uh, that right there is a key indicator that they're not being open and upfront for a reason. And that would put me on the defensive as well. part of the Behavioral Health Bureau with the Sheriff's Department. So it's a new bureau that they created uh, regarding mental health status and uh, mental health concerns that people have. So we just want to come and talk to you and see how everything's going, see if there's anything we can help with. Quiet. The mental health. So how did you get a hold of it? So the VFW yeah. received a letter from Laura. In Dana Point. In Dana Point. And Is that why it's the Sheriff instead of... So I want you to look at Logan at this point. Now his arms are crossed and he's he's not happy, right? So he understands kind of he, he's put the pieces together, I would assume. I would love to interview him and get his idea. But at this point, he, his arms are crossed. He's he's still not in a, you know, necessarily offensive position or he's losing his patience. He's now in a defensive position. He's a little bit more closed off. And, and he understands that there's kind of a heightened sense for this visit. And it's obviously making him. Uh, not as casual as he was, which is ultimately I would do the same. I would show the officers, okay, you've just kind of 
uh, change this conversation to go away that I'm not I'm not enjoying. And we're going to go ahead and, and show you a sign of that by me crossing and squaring off my shoulders. Uh, just a little nuance, a little subtle thing, but something that officers certainly picked up. Well, correct, yeah. Because mm -hmm. uh, we, we control pretty much all so of South County. So BFW forwarded my wife's email to the sheriff's department. Yes, they were concerned. Who? The VFW was. So Who? they... I don't know who the. I'm guessing. Who did they, they get the letter from? Uh, Mr. Hadagi was the a letter Ricky? addressed to. I don't know his first name. So Ricky forwarded you an email. Yes, sir. And what's the concern? I guess just that uh, Laura had some concerns with regards to uh, the way you were treated by the VFW. Uh huh. Um, so we we came out. We want to come out and just talk to you and see how everything is going. See kind of if you need anything. <laughs> See, this is completely – see, all the cops have to do is, listen, man, we got a call. They're worried about you. You're a veteran. They're, they say you may have some – so you're showing some signs of, of you know, uh, not strong thoughts about your future or that you might be suffering from some 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 anguish or, or some hardships. Do you need some help? How are you? Are you okay? I'm checking in on a brother. I'm – I'm former Army. What I'd make sure absolutely a veteran is there. I'm former Army. I was 11 Bravo. You know, what did you do in the Army? There is a way to, to handle this, and it's not this. This is not the way to do it, not with a vet, because this is civilian chicken shit stuff. And just rip the Band-Aid off. Tell him what the hell you're there for. Be honest. But the moment that you were dishonest with him, you've lost all credibility, and you're coming from a position of working uphill. Just to check on your well-being, sir. If you need anything, any kind of resources or anything like that, that's all. That's uh, what you should have done. You're playing close. I'm confused. I'm not law enforcement, so it's a team with the behavioral. But what are you? Health or who are you? I'm a therapist, so I work with Orange County Healthcare Agency. Okay. So and you were said, referred to as a deputy, is that correct? I'm sorry. Were you referred to as a deputy? No, sir. No. Oh, okay. We are just, we're deputies. He's the therapist that we ride with, a part of sure. a uh, psychiatric. What's the emergency? There is no emergency. There's That's no just what they call us. That's just. But Ricky thought that there was an emergency, so he forwarded mm, my wife's email. No, there was no emergency. Sure. No, sir. No. I, I think okay. your, your wife alluded to she had concerns with how VFW handles, like, because they mention a lot about suicide awareness and things like that. VFW felt, does. Correct. And so she felt the way that they handled the situation was insensitive. So why are you here instead of VFW? I'm sorry? So what are you exactly. doing here? So again, so... So the VFW screwed up their treatment of a veteran and you're here to see me about it. What they're basically saying is, dude, we're going to make sure that you're not going to go harm yourself or other people based upon what the VFW did because you sent uh, an email that seems a little bit heightened and aggressive. You know what? This is stupid. This, this is this is the problem. There are hundreds of veterans out there that need help that have obvious signs of PTS, anxiety, TBI. This guy doesn't show any of that. Yes, he may be he, he may have struggled with PTS. That's fine. But he obviously has it under control. Uh, I've I've seen several interviews that I've watched of him. His demeanor is one of it's inquisitive. Uh, it, it's not combative. It's simply asking questions and trying to figure out why the hell you're, you're shadowing my doorstep. Uh, at this point, I'd feel the same way. I, I would just feel like this is stupid. This is ridiculous. I hope we get to that point. I hope he uh, can interject a little bit of humor into this because usually that that uh, you know lightens the load. But at this point, his hands are in his pocket now. This is one of exasperation. Now he's just, this is stupid. You guys are here, and I, now I'm going to kind of play with you, and I'm going to continue to drag this out because you've wasted my time. Now I'm going to waste yours. At least that's what I would do. Tangentially, she's saying that the behavior, the way that they, you are a veteran, and so the way that they behave is insensitive to veterans, and she says this kind of thing potentially leads to suicidal whatever. So if someone makes statements like that, that they haven't. So one of those subcontext notes is a suicide is not a laughing matter, and this PERT team is doing an excellent job. I laughed because I was realizing in the moment that my only crime was being different kind of veteran than Rick. See, perfect. That's exactly what I was saying. You see that? He's laughing to himself because that's when he put his hands in his pockets. I'd feel the same way. So this – see, once again, I haven't seen the full video. I only t saw a few seconds of this and then tried to go ahead and clarify the validity of it. Now I'm watching it for the first time. So this is Logan's perspective. And exactly like I said, he's kind of laughing to himself like, I can't believe these guys. What the heck? He's not. He, in fact, he probably advocates for these guys. He advocates for what they're doing because this is exactly what veterans need. They need help. But what they don't need is to be like, you know, kind of. 
I don't know. They don't need to be talked down to or, uh, you know, just cut it to them straight, man. These guys love that stuff. We love straight conversation. We, we Don't beat around the bush. But let's see what else is it. So now we know the inner dialogue is uh, is right here. This is great. Concern, then we, we will come out like, hey, is there a concern? Do you really think that this is a legitimate thing? Okay. Uh, did this did this interaction really affect you in a way that, hey, you know, emotionally, I need, I could use some support because I, That's good. I don't appreciate the way you've handled, then we can link you up to services. The easiest way to discredit contrasting voices is to paint them as a threat either to themselves, suicide, or to others, homicide. That's good stuff. So obviously looking at the lines of delineation between uh, through his, his, his eyes and then the officer's eyes, uh, like most veterans, analyzing the situation, identifying uh, the threat cause threat analysis. What is their mission? What is mine? How are we conflicting with each other? Uh, I love that. I can't wait to get this guy on the show. I got to get him on the show. Like that. So I think he had to react to the content of the letter, the letter in what she wrote in there. So if anyone uses this terminology, they can't just ignore that. They have to say like, what terminology? Hey. So if she using the word suicide and suicidal oh, ideas, okay. and suicidal thoughts, if you are generally concerned for a veteran's mental health, then PERT is a great resource, 211OC org. But Rick was not reacting to the content of my uh, of my partner's letter. I think that was Laura is who they referenced, uh, or Lori, one of the two. Rick was using law enforcement to extend the humiliating treatment he started on a phone a week prior. Okay, so it's getting deeper. So it sounds like Rick from the VFW is, uh, is old time salt and doesn't necessarily have the same level of respect for, for new salt. Uh, it's it's just kind of a an OG and non OG term. Um, it's the same mentality as calling someone uh, a pogue or uh, you know a support class. Th there's there's these hierarchies in the middle military that uh, the younger generation is is a little bit soft and haven't really experienced conflict to the level that WW2 Vietnam Korea did. Uh, and you know what that they they may absolutely be right. But war is war, and when you're in it and when you're doing it, the, the last thing you're thinking is, geez, I wonder. If this was similar to what my grandfather went through, it's all bad. It's all horrible. And and perspective is important here. And that's a concern. So she's implying okay. that, hey, my husband may be at risk and you guys are are, are, are treating him poorly. And that would be a concern. Okay. Um, and just so I know who I'm talking about, does anybody here have any military service? No. Do, no. do we personally? No. no. No, sir. Okay. So do you all? See, I love that. Exactly like I said, there should be a military person there who can understand and relate to his service. Uh, that there's a certain lingo that they – now, cops have a lot of it, right? Police officers usually have very similar lingo. But it's really hard when you have a domestic um, enforcement officer and then you have a per person who – uh, is not necessarily defense. They are offense. They are a weapon. They are utilized – uh, through the government to execute a certain mission with certain parameters. And most of those um, are, are, are HK um, authorities. And it's very different than an officer. So it would be good to have somebody there who understands the lingo. Uh, if he says Charlie Mike or says Pop Smoke or he says Bravo Zulu, uh, most officers aren't going to necessarily understand that unless they've served. So he's showing this letter and it says, I know you're off today. We may have a problem with a new VFW member. I may need to file a police report regarding the safety of our office personnel. Rick uh, Jeriguel, Jeriguel, whatever the hell his name is. So then on the sub contacts box, it says the first contact Rick made with Monteleon was not out of concern that I might hurt myself. Okay. All right. I'm um, Kristen Monteleon. That might be somebody who is in charge of the VFW. Uh, or something else like a supervisor or, you know, head of the Legion or uh, head of all the posts in the area. But I I'm not sure. We'll find out, I would assume, in a little Does bit. Does anybody have a sense of how this might be kind of? Okay, this was the first email Rick sent to Captain Monty alone two days after my partner's email. So Captain Monty alone sounds like probably somebody who's a regional commander or something like that in charge of the VFW. W. Uh, my last contact with Rick was on a phone call on Tuesday the 22nd, followed by my partner's email on Wednesday the 23rd. Weird. I understand, sir. I, I, I think us police officers showing up to anyone's house, obviously, is usually a concern for people. Uh, but we wanted to kind of follow up with you and see how you're doing. That's all it is. Okay. If you would like, we can get someone else down here who has military record and service. There no, you I'm go. 
No, that's a good answer, right? That's a great answer. And and we're here to check on you. And that should have been the first thing. Hey, Logan, my name's Officer So-and-so, Officer Spear. Uh, we're doing a health and safety check. I wanted to let you know that our military service, we, we obviously is none. Uh, we have a, a clinical psychologist here who travels with us. We check on veterans just to make sure there was a letter that was sent by the VFW from your wife. It, it triggered a response from them. We're checking on you. It, 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 all you need to do is, is you know, give us that. If you need some help, let us know. We're here. Here's some resources. Here's some cards. If not, we're going to pop smoke and, and, and Charlie Mike. So real simple process just to check in. You're not encroaching upon his rights. You're not asking him a bunch of questions. You've identified who he is and then get to the point. That would have been much better, but they didn't do that. So Logan's now going to go ahead and walk him through uh, the process, it seems. It's curious because the... So in the sub bubble, it says Rick's first reaction to veteran spouse telling him he had acted like a jerk was to point the finger at the veteran and send the cops. Exactly. When you talk about sensitivity. Mm -hmm. I can't find it. I know she sent an email. Mm -hmm. um, so you're here to check on me because offer services if you need them. The rest of the pert visit, I am calling BS in my mind. Exactly, I'm getting increasingly frustrated that Rick was allowed to create a paper trail to propagate his false narrative and distract from his shitty behavior. Yeah, you can see it. His legs are crossed. One hand goes in the pocket and one hand in a relaxed position. I mean, he's sending mixed signals and that's frustration in a nutshell. He doesn't know how to act. He doesn't know whether he should cross his arms, cross his legs. He's frustrated and I get it. And and those are the signs that I see too. And I'm frustrated. My legs just crossed and I'm sitting here doing this and tapping because I feel for the guy. I've been in the position. I've had a door knock before. Um, you know, I, it was funny. Somebody popped uh, an M80 down a well, and it, 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 you know, there is a very distinct difference between a firework and a gunshot, but either way, it was an alarm to me at one o'clock in the morning. My neighbor texted me and said, dude, would you, would you go take a look at our neighborhood? And they know I'm armed. They know I have no problem doing that. And I broke out my AR and I, I swept the area and I flashed the area and, and I looked and smelled obviously, you know, gunpowder and, uh, uh, you know, realized it was a firework after the plume of smoke coming out and some kids being stupid. And of course I got a door knock for having a weapon. And I'm like, you know, are you okay? What's going on? You know, and there's a concern, but those officers are sheriffs that I know. And and they were absolutely straight up. Hey Matt, what's going on? I said, well, somebody set off a, an M80 down a, down one of our wells. It sounded like, you know, a small um, incendiary device or, or, you know, concussive ordinance. And I didn't know what it was because it was extenuated by the, uh, by the drainage pipe and they're like, oh, okay. All right. Is that what we smell? And it still lingered in the air. It was a humid night and it was, it was uh, you know, low pressure. So it was still in the air and they left and no big deal, but I can understand where he's at because I've also had uh, a conversation with police where I've left in handcuffs over something that was later found to be completely ridiculous. And, and my frustration level was there too. So Future note to police officers watching this, treat veterans differently. The moment you're 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 gonna knock that door, you know who you're gonna see. You have a description, you have their history, you know everything about them. When you see veteran, uh, be honest, right? No nonsense. If they are not showing signs of aggression or manic or anything else, then you just better be straight up with them because all you're gonna do is piss them off. The, the letter is not clear on what your wife wrote, so I don't know what her intent okay. was and no, the language I have it that in here. she used. So I don't know what her intent was. But okay. anytime anyone uses those words, they wanna make sure that, hey, we're putting an effort out there to reaching out in the event that there is a need and that you do have, you would like some additional services, then we're more than happy to offer that to you. Okay. I don't know why it's not pulling up on my phone. That's okay. No yeah, worries. my wife sent an email because Rick, I asked a question and he didn't like my answer. And uh, I'm going to go to the big screen here and it says to Dana point VFW from Logan. Thanks for the heads up. I was actually going to pop in this morning, so I will plan on holding off. I would like to have a conversation with our post about work I do around fellow military families and the broken federal systems we veterans rely upon for support, namely the reporting system for veteran employment discrimination complaints and how the DOL has been, yeah, the DOL has been treating us worse than other groups seeking protection from hostile work environments. It is of particular interest to our post because Congressman Mike Levin has for nearly four years been ignoring the data and refuting to act as he has said he would for veterans. 
If there is a healthy forum or time in which I might introduce this issue to our post, I'd be very grateful to, for your thoughts on this. I can also send you some graphics to show a sketch of the problem and who it affects us as veterans. Thank you for considering this, Commander. Wow. Uh, laden with respect, well thought out, articulate, non-emotional, logical. Uh, I don't understand what the problem is. I would get this email and I would immediately, uh, my interest would be piqued, especially if I've worked with veterans or I've been in the position, especially the VFW, um, I would not consider this to be threatening. I, I would like to see the follow-up email, but that one right there would just pique my interest, if nothing else. I was making all kind of weird comments about like, yeah, it was really weird. Okay. Um, but the topic of sensitivity is interesting to me because it's weird that you're coming to a veteran's home. Nobody here has military service. Yep. You got weapons. Yep. And that doesn't seem like. That's what we're That's what we're here to determine. So okay. No, it, it is a problem okay. for the military spouse to write to a commander of the VFW in Dana Point. That commander mm -hmm. forwarded an email to the police to send armed officers to that veteran's home making suggestions about their mental health. So they're sending, what they're sending is me. So they're sending a therapist. I don't travel without deputies because I work with them. And that's for my safety. Usually I'm doing 50 or 50 assessments. Do you feel unsafe? Things, those sorts of things. That's right. That's right. Do you feel unsafe? And shouldn't that have been presented to me immediately? Shouldn't you have knocked on the door and introduced yourself with one officer uh, who is not standing in a position of ready threat uh, and having them lead the conversation and dialogue. So, um, you know, I understand that there are certain legalities to this um, where, you know, a psychiatrist and a civilian can't just knock a door and start presenting. But very quickly, uh, a sheriff could have knocked on the door and said, hi, my name's, you know, whatever, whatever. Um, I, I run blah, 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 blah. I'm here to assess mental health with you as a veteran. It's a service we provide with a PERT team, blah, 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 blah. Uh, th this is a psychiatrist who we want to give you a chance to talk to. Would that be okay with you today? And then if he persists to say, sure, or if he says, no, absolutely not. I have no desire to talk to you guys. Have a great day. Then, then you walk away. Uh, but to come up here under false pretense, uh, under false conditions, and I understand these sheriffs are just doing their job and they have to go ahead and assume the worst but once again, um, there has to be a little detective work here, right? You've, you've got to investigate this. Does he have a criminal history? How did he exfil from the military? What does his DD-2 say? Did he have signs of clinical depression? Has he had trouble with the law based upon uh, PTS, TBIs, whatever, whatever? This information is readily available because it would be criminal. And if it's not criminal, then it's none of your effing business. And that's kind of what he's saying. So it's not a matter I don't know you. So anytime I'm making contact with someone I don't know, I have my deputies with me. So they're not here to threaten, intimidate, or any of that. They're just here to support me. To right. Sure the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Sure. Anybody else heard that one? <laughs> sure. So, so you're behind two people with firearms, and I'm supposed to what? Like what? How do these visits usually go? I'm just kind of curious. Well, usually we're offering someone services and saying, like, hey, do we need? Do you need any services or anything? That's not what they said. You? Your wife sort of obtusely alluded to the fact that, hey, maybe my... So here's the letter from Laura. It's Laura, not Lori. I apologize. I'm, like I said, I'm just, I'm just getting into this. So it says, Dear Mr. Jarigal, I guess I, I, I – first of all, get a name that people – whatever. My name is Laura Isaac, Logan's Isaac's wife. Last night, Logan shared with me your phone conversation and shared me your email correspondence leading up to it. Logan is his own person and can navigate concerns with other people on his own. I'm writing to you directly. However, because my concern has moved beyond Logan and into our family as a military family, much what Logan experiences as a veteran directly affects our family. I know how much he needs a supportive community and how much our young daughter needs a father who has a place outside of home and work where he feels welcome and can be himself. As you know, one of the leading reasons that anyone takes their own life is because they don't feel like they belong anywhere. Like if they were gone, nobody would care. I read in your latest November newsletter with a blurb commending the VA for looking further into veteran suicide. I suspect VFW is one of many communities aiming to address this suicide crisis. It's the one thing to give it lip service in your newsletter, but when on the ground, you are discouraging and shaming veterans like my spouse over a phone call. You are obliterating any semblance of a safe space for veterans like him, further isolating, and I would even suggest contributing to the suicide crisis. 
I imagine a community of veterans who share uh, many of Logan's life experiences would have been a place that feels, and then it's not continued. I, there is absolutely nothing that says my husband's is considering suicide based upon your actions. That's not what he's saying. He's saying your actions could lead to veterans feeling like they don't have a place. Obviously, he has a family. Obviously, he has a job. Obviously, he has a book. He's very successful in what he does. In no way, shape, or form, this is somebody taking uh, a position of extreme over cautiousness and zealousness based upon an interaction that sounds like that he didn't like the way it went. And then, you know, through retribution calls the police on Logan, um, who already is fired up about this. And this is going to do more harm than good. You've now escalated the situation past conversation and you've escalated towards action that can be punitive against Logan and his future. Uh, if this is obviously going to be a police report, this is obviously going to be in his file, and he has they have created a paper trail that affects him in all other future interactions with job employment, with with other police officers, with the VFW, and if he as is considered to be a danger, uh, he can be barred from the VFW. I mean, and these things uh, aren't acceptable. Husband might have a concern. Maybe he's at some kind of risk or not. We're just here to determine whether that's true or not because her letter wasn't clear. So never now said, what did Rick say. send? I'm sorry? What did Rick send? Because it, it He just forwarded that just email forwarded to, to that with nothing. Well, he just told us that there might be some concern, so if you would like to go talk to him. Oh, this is great. This is so <laughs> I like this guy. He's got it all laid out for me. I don't even need to investigate. I know you're off today. We may have a problem with a VFW member. I may need a police report regarding the safety of our office personnel. Right. This is Absolutely, the one that I read earlier, and this is in reply to uh, the email that he forwarded to this, you know, Kirsten Monty alone, who is a captain of some sort or whatever. That's why we're here. I don't intend to talk to Rick because he's kind of a douchebag. Okay, mm -hmm. that, that's why. That's why Rick forwarded the information on. Is first. any of this public record? No. Anybody look this up? No. no. So there's no record of making an armed visit to a veteran's home. It's not true. You not can look that up. No. no. Okay. That's a lie. That's, I would that, that's love to I'd love to see a journalist. I see, here's the thing is, is I 100% disagree with what they're saying. There has to be a police report filed on this. Uh, this was a call. This was a concern. And it depends on how it's coded and it depends under, under what code they put this under. If they consider this to be a threat uh, to self-harm, or if they consider this to be a threat to the VFW. Now, the VFW called it in as a possible threat to their location. That has implications a lot different than a mental health check. Uh, th there will be a record of this. And who can access this uh, and what level it is, is is not determined yet. Th this isn't over. If Rick decides to go ahead and take a baseball bat to Logan's car, this completely will be a part of a police report and subject to uh, any basic level search. I disagree 100%. You you can have, as I know for a fact, have CPS called on you and it stays on record for three years. Just their investigation, whether the findings are conclusive or inconclusive, and in ours, it was most assuredly without prejudice inconclusive, but it's still on record for three years. We tried to have it expunged. We paid $10,000 with lawyer fees to try to do it and they will not. We had it to the lowest possible uh, outcome and they still will not stricken it from the record. Uh, even though it won't show up in searches, if 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 a high enough uh, request is is submitted, uh, it absolutely can be found. And it's just insane. It's insane. So for, so his questioning is absolutely lucid uh, and and extremely logical and something that I I think is 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 important. You, you want to know where's this going to be? I I hold a security clearance. Maybe he does, or I work for a defense contractor, or I'm still in the reserve. There's a lot of things that can impact his current stasis and his employment based upon this one interaction alone. Ask any guy who has a, or girl who holds the security clearance what a DUI can do, or what a weapons charge can do, or a dime bag of oregano, whatever it is, all of these things have consequences. Journalists? Yeah. Okay. I can help you with social work services, mental health services. Okay. I didn't ask for that, and I don't think my wife did either. Okay. So did you want to try and get talk to, to speak with a journalist? Is that what you're trying to get sure, at? Sure, yeah. So my recommendation is we can't help with that. You can contact like the local news agent, news agency, or even like the Orange County Register or something, and then talk to them. Okay. Should I tell them that there are police officers at my door? Sure. Ask about my mental health. Yeah. Let me make sure I can get this in. Um. So, just to repeat, 
Nice. My wife sent an email to VFW Commander Rick Tureggi. Yes, sir. Commenting about how his comments were really inappropriate and borderline, well, I won't say borderline anything. And then Rick, VFW Commander at Dana Point, forwarded an email to law enforcement, which then sent armed officers and a therapist to my house. Yes, sir. Like we told you, we're a part of the psychiatric emergency response team, and that's why we're here. Yeah. And I psychiatrically cannot avoid the fact that you each have firearms and you're standing behind two armed people. So that's just the way we're dressed, sir. It's just part of our, our, uniform, part of our so. uniform. Yeah, yeah. You don't see how that might be a problem? Not really, sir. And again, none of you have military... Well, well, he's going to tell you why it's a problem, and I'm going to tell you too beforehand because I, I certainly don't want to look smarter than Logan because, honestly, I love the guy, and I, I would just listen to him talk. Uh, the reason why is because this situation, I want you to look at it from, from a veteran's eyes. I want you to think about a veteran who might be going through a moment of, um, of crisis or an episode where a simple knock on the door that's unannounced or uninvited can create an extreme amount of tension for a veteran. I, I know that sounds silly, but uh, until you've been in that situation, you don't know. I, I want you to look at the stucco on the wall and the narrowed vision that creates from that hallway. Uh, and if you are in a state and seeing people in, you know, uh, olive drab military style colors uh, and see a guy back there in a camel, camel hair jacket, and I, uh, how quickly and how difficult would it be for somebody who is suffering an episode or a flashback or in some sort of mental trauma who is armed to not consider that at a flash moment to be a threat and draw their weapon? If, if you're not a veteran and you've never been there, you have no idea what's going on in that guy's head. And I completely agree with him 100% that this and the way it looks to me from I, the moment he turned on his camera and I put myself in... in the experience I have with working with veterans with PTS and the veteran crisis line and vet net and hearing the stories that some of the vets who, who are experiencing and what their episodes are like, this is not good. And that's what he's trying to say is that the, you guys are setting yourself up to not only put a, your lives in jeopardy, but a veteran's life in jeopardy as well. And, and it's counterintuitive to what you're trying to accomplish. No, sir. So it might be lost on everybody but me, who spent six years in the Army, how ridiculous it is that another military person sent an email to law enforcement. Law enforcement, right? Or was there some other department that Rick Draghi sent it to? No, sir. Law enforcement. Okay, so he sent it to law enforcement, who then forwarded it to y'all, and y'all came out here. Yes, sir. Just to check up on you to see kind of how you're doing, see if there's any additional resources or services that we can try and provide. You addressed that you wanted to speak with a journalist, and I told you that you can contact those who register yeah, or something like that. Yeah, interested now that they sent, that Rick Draghi sent armed officers to my house. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Did you need any assistance or resources from no, us? No, that wasn't what I was asking. If I could pull up the email, I would, but I will for the, re the register, I guess. Okay. All right, sir. Sounds good. Um... All right. Did you want us to give you a card with regards to any resources that you, if you have later down the road, uh, did you want us to give you a card with that information sure. on it? And sure. can I show you the body cam footage so I can get longer video of all this? These are all public records, sir. Cool. So I have this uh, card, sir. Uh, Santa Ana is the place to get that. That's the last four of the incident number, uh, how you can get that information, okay? Okay. There's suicide appears once in the email. No, no, no. Sorry. And you had, you received this from Rick? I did not receive this from Rick. I received it with the VFW. Oh, okay. I suspect VF. no, 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 wait. I read my wife saying, I read in your latest November news. I'm going to fast forward a little bit because we. Did you hear in any word that I. So it says, I'm beginning to realize how little attention was actually given to the supposed triggering email. Deputies remain calm and professional, even as I got more agitated as the visit, visit wound down. Yeah, I, I wanted to say, like, when I get to the big screen, I'll talk about that. Let, let's finish this up, and then I'll give my thoughts on the officers. Because in no way, shape, or form am I, am I trouncing the officers. This is just a simple, uh, this is a protocol issue, this is a training issue, and this is an awareness issue. Uh, this is a skill issue, not a will problem. They don't, they have the will to do well, that they don't have the skill to necessarily do it effectively. So let, let me uh, address that. In a somehow at risk? 
That's why I'm saying it's not clear exactly what the intent of the statement is. So I believe that he was erring on the side of caution, going, hey, get down there and offer any services if any services are needed. It seems more like harassment so uh, on Rick's part. That I don't. Federal standard for harassment, unwelcome conduct that creates an environment that is intimidating, hostile, or abusive. I, I certainly wouldn't say that any of this was hostile or abusive. Intimidating, for sure. Absolutely intimidating. But there's very few police interactions that aren't intimidating unless it's a buddy who's visiting you to come over and have a few pops. Uh, I, I hear his point. But it certainly is hostile and abusive and intimidating from the VFW guy, Rick, uh, because he took something completely out of context, which was an awareness thing, and, and then specified that it was Logan and misrepresented the email's contents. And obviously these officers haven't had a chance to see it. Uh, that to me is ba is poor investigative work, and this call should not have taken place. This could have ha been handled with a phone call. Uh, it could have been handled with a response to Laura. Are you saying that your husband, you're feeling that he's showing some signs where he may need some assistance? I guarantee at that point, Laura would say, absolutely not. That's not what I said. I'm simply trying to educate on how this could impact certain veterans. Uh, my husband excluded from that because he is in a very good state of mind and a very good place. But we're talking about the person who is X. Uh, not necessarily my husband. No, it sounds like you guys have a personal relationship. So that's no, we don't. That's why I'm trying to figure out how he thought that I was at risk based on those three appearances of that word. Okay. This is harassment. Okay, I'm sorry. Should you I file a police it? report against Rick Tereggi for harassment? Because now all my neighbors are... Rick Tereggi, I don't understand how he's getting that last name from that one that I saw. Whatever, Rick. going to ask me or not ask me and just whisper about the veteran... So how do I file a police report Perfect. against Rick Jureggi for harassment? So there's really no harassment there, sir. He was just forwarding a possible concern, and that's all we're doing. Did we're you following hear so California standard for harassment, a credible threat of violence meant to seriously scare, annoy, or harass someone for no valid reason. In what yeah. I read, do you hear any, any suggestion that I might be at risk? So again, there was just three words mentioned of suicide, and that's why we're just following up to make sure that if, if anyone that you know of or yourself... I'll ask any three of you. Did any of you? Okay, so here's the problem, and and I'm I'm going to go to the big screen. We've we've, I think everyone sees that Logan is a great guy. He's a good dude. He's been through a lot of things and doesn't deserve uh, this this type of treatment from anybody, especially someone from the VFW who's been through similar things. I will say this. The last part of the video, um, uh, this is not the, p the place to litigate your case. If you have concerns about Rick, then you can file uh, charges against Rick for harassment or decide to sue him for um, you know, defamation of character or whatever you want or libel or slander, whatever you think is warranted. And I don't think any of those are in this case. This is a VFW commander who probably is, has read way too many emails lately about veterans and the risk of suicide and culpability and responsibility for the VFW to report these kind of things and has been overtrained and oversaturated with this crap. And I can't hold him in contempt for that because we all know how things are happening in the military and posthumously from exiting the military, the VFW, the V, the VA, all are getting these sensitivity awareness classes and all this other crap. So I, I, I don't know Rick, so I can't call him a douchebag. I, I think he, he, he definitely um, overreacted, and he absolutely one hundred percent took a road that was unnecessary and and used the nuclear option when he should have uh, simply had a conversation with a fellow member and a legion member. Uh, Laura sounds like a great wife, a concerned wife, empowered her husband that he can make his own decisions, but was concerned with the way that this guy was treating and wanted from a civilian's aspect, a, a, a partner to a veteran to express her opinions on what happened. And she did it fabulously. The officers did a fine job. Um, they shouldn't have been deceptive at the beginning. They should have had a military uh, service member there. Uh, they should have realized that once he started litigating the case, they should have popped smoke, handed the card, and been up front to begin with. Um, and the only thing I see, Logan, and this certainly isn't wrong, this is something I've done, is try to litigate the case on the front step. It's not the time. Um, those officers obviously realized that this was stupid. They wanted to leave. Uh, they were trying to you know, backpedal a little bit. Um, and, and pop smoke and put up the white flag. Uh, if you have that, you know, Logan should know what that looks like. It's surrender. You now have um, a case against the VFW to bring that to the captain of, of the post. 
Uh, you obviously can use your influence as a as a novelist and on podcasts like mine and others to get the word out on how you feel the VFW treated people. Uh, I, I give him an open ex, uh, invitation to to come on anytime. But it's a very interesting case. So to Jason, yeah, it's real. It's 100%. I think this happens every day in America. Things like this happen. And sometimes they end up being extremely dangerous and bad things happen. And other times they're innocuous and and completely benign, like this one. Uh, I would recommend that if you are not trained to speak to veterans, that you shouldn't. Uh, I would recommend to that PERT team that they need to find a way to learn de-escalation techniques um, that are actually centered around the person and not necessarily the standard civilian. Military people do not like to be handled. We do not like people who are dishonest. Rip the Band-Aid and tell us why you're there. Uh, I think those officers could could use a veteran um, partner to you know, travel with them a little bit, teaching them some of the language and how a civilian should talk to military. Other than that, it's a very interesting video. It opens up a lot of questions. Uh, the whole dichotomy of it could be dissected from different perspectives, but that's mine. I hope you enjoyed it a little bit long, but it is the way it is. It's a 15-minute video, and I wound up giving you uh, about 40 minutes of analysis. We'll see if I can cut that down a little bit. Folks, thanks for watching the Don't Unfriend Me show. You can stop by the dumb show at thedumbshow.com. Pick yourself up a cool shirt. The number one selling, try that in a small town. We sold a grip of them. We sold out so fast. They're available now over at thedumbshow.com. Thanks for watching. We'll be live tonight at eight o'clock. We will see you then. I will go out with the Veteran Crisis Hotline like I always do. God bless. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow. I'm David Boreanis with the Cast the Seal team, and we have an important message for returning vets. We want you to know if you're struggling to cope, there's help and it's just a phone call away. The Veterans Crisis Line is staffed with experienced professionals who know your struggles. There's no greater sacrifice in service to our country. We're able to enjoy our freedoms because of it. Your service is important, you are important. For vets and their families, the Veterans Crisis Line is here to help 24 hours a day. Please call.